Hello. Welcome to uh, class, I guess. Uh, so I'm John Bender Waffles Outjets, and today we are going to be covering uh, proper homebrewing techniques for, uh, you know, like doing homebrew stuff. Uh, specifically, races is what we're going to be looking at today. I'm turning off chat on screen because this is going to be uploaded to youtube after this is all over so we don't need that plus it just gets in the way okay so today we are going to be creating three races based off of final fantasy 10 we are going to be creating a playable race for the albed a playable race for the ronzo and a playable race for the guado why am i doing this because i want to a couple of things before we get into this. First and foremost, this is uh, kind of going to be done informally, in case you hadn't noticed. I'm doing it via live stream instead of a YouTube video. So anyways, uh, which by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube afterwards, twitch.tv slash benderwaffles. There's a link for that in the description. If you're watching this live on Twitch, though, welcome. Uh, if you see me looking... Over here, I'm either checking chat or I'm checking some notes that I have. I have done some prep, some uh, work on these races beforehand, so I'm not sitting here hemming and hawing the whole time while we do this. Uh, so, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, so, again, we're going to be doing the three races. And when you're doing races within Dungeons & Dragons, it's a good idea to have a very strong idea of who they are obviously uh whether it's a custom race or you're doing like we're doing today where you're adapting something you need to have an idea of their culture of their physiology all that sort of stuff so that you can kind of implement that into their creation also another thing that is a good idea to have is pretty strong knowledge of at the very least the races in the player's handbook the reason why is because those are the races that sort of set the standard for power level um you don't necessarily want to be creating races that are too overly powerful um that make the races in this book look like child's play because then when you present your players with these races there's going to be no reason for them to choose the baseline races outside of aesthetic choices, which you, you just want to avoid that. At the same time, you also want to avoid creating races that are so underpowered that playing them is pointless. So try to aim for the level in here. That being said, what I'm going to be presenting you guys with today is pre play is pre play test stuff. So this is stuff that hasn't been play tested. This is stuff that, Nobody else has really had a look at. I mean, I am doing this live, so I guess some people have had a look at it. But uh, if these races wind up too powerful or not powerful enough, that's fine because they're first draft. Through the process of playtesting, they would then get refined and fixed up. So don't leave me a bunch of comments down below being like, huh, that race is overpowered, idiot. Like, don't do that. First of all, that's rude. And second of all, that's just uncalled for completely and totally so today i'm going to be using this uh bit of software here it is called the home brewery it is a online uh software it's in browser you can go to the homebrewery.naturalcrit.com and follow along if you want to just create an account and it's totally free allows you to get in there and just make your homebrew I use this for layout purposes, but then when I actually release something, I do all of the final version of the PDF myself in, uh, I do it in Photoshop. Most people do it in either Illustrator or a publisher, but I'm weird. Uh, and speaking of which, when this is all said and done, I am going to release these races. Oops. When this is all said and done, I am going to release these races uh, over on my Discord. So you'll be able to jump over there and download them when this is all over for use in your own games, if you want to. So let's get started. We're going to start things off with the Albed. Now, Home Brewery here uses some like very uh, HTML-y scripting language. Uh, I have a, over on my second window, I have kind of a 
uh, a cheat menu. I have another homebrew that I have open so that I can make sure that stuff looks nice. You don't necessarily need to, but I do because I'm kind of, uh, kind of all about stuff looking nice, which is why you would think at a certain point I would, uh, learn to not use cap lock, but it is not this day. All right. So I'll bed come up first. Now, normally when you're outlining something, you'd come up with like a description and everything for them, but we're not going to worry about that because if you're watching this, uh, I'm going to assume that you already have a pretty solid understanding of Final Fantasy X. And if you don't, that's fine too. Uh, the all bed being the sort of humanoid race that uses Machina and all this jazz. We'll, we'll talk more about who they are later. So the first thing that you start off with, at least the first thing that I always start off with is the ability score increase races within dungeons and dragons. In case you don't know, in which case, if you don't know this, why are you watching this? Uh, all have, they all grant bonuses to your ability scores, depending on which ones you choose. Usually the format is plus two to one major stat and plus one to one minor stat. There are some races that, that vary there. Uh, humans immediately come to mind. Humans within the player's handbook get, I think it's a uh, plus one to every stat or something like that. And I think goblins get minus one to intelligence. They don't normally do minuses. It's normally bonuses and they don't ever really give anything more than plus two to any one stat. That seems to be kind of just the rule of thumb as it were. So with I'll bed, this is one of the things that I actually did beforehand. I did figure out at least I'll bed. Uh, they're going to get intelligence plus two. So let's give them, this isn't proper language for this format, but that's fine. So we're going to give them, I misspelled intelligence too. Uh, so we're going to give them intelligence plus two and Albed are also most often seen being sort of rogue pirate like characters. So giving them a dexterity bonus works as well. And they're going to get that plus one. So again, that is following the uh, sort of. So once again, that is following the sort of standard that you see in the player's handbook with a plus two to a major stat and plus one to a minor stat. So there and the reason why i went with intelligence over something like wisdom uh is because there is a class called the artificer that exists within uh um it exists within dungeons and dragons now it debuted in eberron rising from the last war uh and its main spellcasting stat is intelligence now albed should probably be built from the ground up to be good artificers and that's one of the major things that we're doing here is we're increasing their intelligence. So after the ability score is, I have this in my notes, age. So this is one of those like kind of just flavor stats that we give, but um, it is still important because it does flesh out who exactly the race is. So the Albed are basically humans. So... Uh, let's say something along the lines of I'll bed reach maturity around age 18 and live about 70 years, roughly. Uh, again, you'd flower, you'd flower up the language a little bit, um, just to, you know, just to kind of make it seem a little bit nicer, but for the sake of this, we're just making it real simple, just cutting to the chase, as it were. Uh, okay, so next up after age is alignment. Again, this is another one of those sort of, uh, you know, more aesthetic, more flowery kinds of things. It's not necessary to the playability of the race. Something about alignment, especially within 5th edition, is that it's very fluid. Um, old editions of Dungeons and Dragons, if you broke out of your alignment, you had to face major penalties. Within 5th edition, alignment doesn't really matter. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I'm going to leave it up to you. Uh, but, so, alignment here in regards to races is more of a suggestion than anything. A lot of times it's just like, you know, 
oh, the this race tends to be evil or this race tends to follow the law a little bit closer than some others. But that doesn't mean that you can't take that race and make that inherently evil race make a good character. And you can't take that inherently lawful character or race and make a chaotic character from them. It doesn't really doesn't really work that way. Uh, again, it's more of a suggestion, but let's just go into this. I'll bed. Uh, so the Albed race, they're kind of outcasts from society. So that sort of lends itself to them being not really on the lawful side of things, especially because they also like kidnap people and, you know, they raid old Machina sites and they go against the laws of Yevon. Uh, so Albed completely disregard the law, the commonly accepted laws of Spira. I should learn how to spell. I write for a living, I swear. Commonly accepted laws of Spira and openly defy, again, spelling John, and openly defy the Church of... Yevon. Therefore, they tend towards the chaotic side of things. Yeah, that's that's where we're going to end their, their alignment description. Next up is size. Now, this is the first one that actually does have an effect on gameplay. Uh, mainly the last sentence of the description is the gameplay part. All the rest of it is uh, froofy you know, aesthetic stuff. So size, uh, I'll bed stand anywhere between, I don't know, five feet to six and a half feet. Sure. They're humans. So, you know, that's, that's a pretty average range. Uh, and way, Uh, let's think about this. Let's think about the, the language in this. I don't know. Around 180 pounds on average. Now here's that important gameplay sentence. Your size is medium within, uh, Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition. Your Race's size affects things like your carry weight. How much can you push and pull? Things like that. A general rule of thumb with uh, with creating races is small or medium. Those are really your two choices. It's kind of an... I don't know if it's necessarily an unwritten rule because they're pretty upfront and blatant about it, but Wizards of the Coast has gone on record to say that uh, they don't want to create large characters because that affects game balance. Uh, that's why you'll see them make a race like the Luxodon, these giant elephant people, and be like, oh yeah, that giant elephant person is size medium, so he's in the same size bracket as a normal human. But it's like because creating a large character unbalances things. It unbalances carry weight and it unbalances quite a few of those sort of things that look, it's things that only people who are like diehard rules lawyers really pay attention to. But you have to take those people into account when you're making things. So don't do large for that reason. Just on the same side of things, don't create a tiny race. Um, so like a fairy would probably fall under small as opposed to tiny. Uh, because then things unbalance in the opposite direction. They become underpowered. So just stay away from that. As I said, keep things in the small to medium range. Um, the majority of your races are probably going to be medium. Unless you're creating like gnomes or goblins or something like that, you're gonna be you're gonna be going with medium. So okay, after that, after size, we get into the actual like uh, well, no, after size, we get into languages. That's the next most important. Or is languages last? Languages are last. What the hell am I smoking? Okay, so this is when we get into the actual the actual racial abilities. So the first one that we want to do with the Albed. 
so the Albed being very like mechanically centered people, it's important for them to have sort of proficiencies in the more techie side of things. There's a variant rule within fifth edition called firearms proficiency. Firearms don't really exist within the world of fifth edition within the forgotten realms, the sort of base setting. Um, but some settings do allow for firearms. And so there are rules in place for firearms. Um, so I think that it would be smart when it comes to the Albed to give them firearm proficiency. So let's name this ability. Uh, give it some flavorful name like ancient firepower or no ooh, ancient firepower is nice, but playing into the idea of the sort of forbidden machina, forbidden firepower. You have pro fish again, someday I'm going to learn how to spell proficiency with firearms but let's not stop there uh another thing that you can have proficiency with is vehicles you can be particularly adept at sailing boats you can be particularly adept at like running war machines and things of that nature which is very much a albedi trait albedi being a correct adjective here so let's also give them with firearms and vehicles land and sea so that's pretty that's pretty good they have proficiency with firearms regardless of their of their class so you could create a albed fighter uh go with the ranged fighting type and use guns and you've created a gunslinger uh there are also homebrew gunslinger classes that you could also run i think matt mercer has rules in place for how he does gunslingers if you wanted to follow those you can find them online simple google search all right uh so let's what normally when you're when you're looking at you know the racial features you're looking at two to three depending on how powerful the racial features are so let's give them another racial feature people in chat what do you think that i should give uh to the albed Actually, Pandarium has, he, he pointed this out as a joke, but there's a really, uh, a really solid point is that the Albed, while they have a place called home, uh, are largely nomadic. So let's, let's think about this here for a second. If we were to give somebody like a, a nomadic kind of trait, what would that look like? Um, hmm. I actually think that I did something like this in one of my, in one of the races that I made for a setting that I'm working on. Let's see if I can find it. I created a nomadic feature. I'm trying to find it. Boop, doop, doo, 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 doo. Which one had this? Ah, uh, nope, that wasn't. Nope, there it is. Nomadic upbringing. You have movement penalty. You do not have a movement penalty across difficult terrain. That could be certainly a solid one. Their eyes are a big indicator of their heritage. Have advantage on disguise checks or something. I mean, I think that their eyes would give them un would give them a disadvantage on disguise checks, which within 5e, you want to kind of avoid penalizing people for choosing a race. That's sort of meant to be left up to the DM. Um, but you could definitely give them actually because outside of the eyes, they do just look human. So maybe that's another thing that we could go with. Um, so that, yeah, let's go with that. Blending in. I'll bed look nearly identical to their human cousins, 
save for their unique eyes. You have advantage. Because even though I would I would say as a GM that it's a disadvantage with the eyes, but you would say that, you know, you have advantage on disguise. This language isn't correct. On disguise checks when trying to land in with a human population. Again, the language there is not correct, but that gives you an idea. It can be cleaned up and made a little better. That's that's a very very situational feature. So let's let's go back to this nomadic sort of thing and let's give them a third feature. Nomadic lifestyle. And I as I said, I added that one in a previous thing that I did, so I'm going to try to just paste that in and just basically use that verbatim. That's another thing that I think is important is, oops, that's my Discord. Uh, don't be afraid to just take features from other races or even like other bits of homebrew that you've seen to work within your own homebrew. If you're going to like be selling the homebrew on the Dungeon Masters Guild or whatever, then maybe don't do that. But you know, don't be afraid if you're making something for a home game or you're making something that you're going to put out on the Internet for free. Don't be afraid to get in there and, you know, sort of borrow stuff from other things, either other things that you've created or other things that other people have created. Uh, one of the most popular ways of creating a new race is to take a race that already exists and just reskin it like literally like all the same stats and everything and just, you know, so take like elves in Dungeons and Dragons and reskin them to be elves from uh, the Elder Scrolls. You know, you could take a uh, a wood elf from Dungeons and Dragons, reskin it, and make it into a Bosmer. And while that's not there's that's a pretty like one to one transfer, but you're getting the idea. Um, take take a uh i would probably do like go online and search for like half ogres and you could reskin them to be urukai from lord of the rings that would probably be a pretty solid one um you know just stuff like that you know don't be afraid to do that as professor frankly down in chat is saying it is free it's okay so yeah if you're you know if you're releasing this for free it's totally totally okay totally fine just don't be afraid to do that as you're creating. In fact, I highly encourage you to take a look at what else is out there and see what you can borrow or what you can adapt to do your own thing. Uh, okay, so the Abed, they're, they're sort of like basic racial features are looking pretty solid. They're a little underpowered, I feel, um, compared to the SRD races, but that's fine. This is a This is an okay starting point for this race. So now after the uh the race features, this is when we get into languages. Uh languages tends to be the last thing unless you have sub races, which we're going to get into sub races here in a little bit. Um so you know, let's just kind of let's let's figure out so obviously Albed speak common, which is the Dungeons and Dragons phrase for uh English or whatever the sort of most commonly spoken language is, um, is common kind of just represents the language that your table speaks. It is the most common language. Um, and they also probably speak, obviously, I'll bed. So they re you can speak, read, and write common, and I'll bed. And then if you're playing with these people at the table... If you want to like sprinkle in the gameplay mechanic of the Albed primers, go for it. There are a ton of websites online for uh, translating, you know, stuff into Albed and vice versa. So, you know, if you are playing with the Albed in your game, just flavor it up. Go nuts. So now this is where the break happens. Uh, 
So you've got your sub races. Guado come in two different varieties. Pure blood and half blood. Again, they don't in the game, but that's that's how we're doing it here. Okay, so uh I need to think of formatting here. Even though formatting is really not that important. So let's do pure blood first, because that's the majority of the uh of the guado. So the guado. Which, if I say guado enough, eventually the word's going to stop meaning anything. Although I would point out that it uh, doesn't really mean anything to most people. Uh, so, the guado are extremely religious people. So let's have a feature for that. And luckily enough, I have a race that is very religious. Religious zealotry. Let's give them that. They gain proficiency in religion which is uh, very much a RP skill. Um, not exactly the most powerful thing in existence, but, you know, there it is. They have proficiency in that. What else, what else makes you think, hey, that's a guado? Like, what can a guado do? Once again, going back to this. Uh, ooh, high, oh, what am I? Th I'm completely forgetting about speed. On these, uh, on these guys, what am I? What am I doing? I've been thinking. I've been completely forgetting this for all the races. This is something that everyone needs to have. Chat, you are you are really not good at calling me out on my screw ups. What the heck, guys? Come on now. Speed. So speed is exactly what you think it is. It is how fast do they move? So the standard, the sort of, uh, you know, baseline speed is 30 feet. That means that within combat, they can move five squares um, or they can dash up to 10 squares. Uh, or no, it's six squares and up to 12. Yeah, because math, five divided, because each square is five feet. You know what, whatever. It's a gameplay thing. You need it in there. So the Albed can move 30 feet. The Ronso can also move 30 feet, because they aren't any slower or any faster. And the Guado here are super fast. So we're going to give them 35 feet. So they can move one more square every turn. That's a very Guado thing to do. Okay. Thank God that I saw that that random thing on the wiki or else I would feel very stupid. Okay. Uh, they have a religious culture, which causes them to come across as arrogant. Their role as guardians of the far plane have led them to look down on other races. Um, we can work that in. But one thing that I'm actually remembering is I need the secondary ability score increase for the sub race. I'm getting all... Weird right now. So anyways, the ability score increase for the pure bloods. They get a plus one, two, hmm. Charisma would be a solid one. But I think that I want to save that for the half blood because again, we're basically making when we're when we do a half blood, we're basically just making an entire race for Seymour. Um so what do you think a base guado would be good at in terms of ability scores um also the guado tend to keep their problems to themselves so they're not like a super talkable talky sort of people they kind of keep to themselves uh you know what because they are so fast intelligence would make sense um but as i was saying because they're so fast dexterity is not a incorrect one to possibly go with we haven't necessarily seen any like examples of them being ninjas or anything in the game but you know what i think that 
just for the sake of moving on, I'm going to listen to chat and we are going to go. Actually, no, yeah, they can't outrun you. So dexterity. That's one of those things that might get changed in playtesting. This will. I'm not going to play test this. Let's be real. I'm not going to. Unless somebody in chat really wants to do a Final Fantasy X based campaign, in which case, get at me. Um, so, this is bugging me more than it should. So, hang on a second. I got to do some formatting stuff because it's bugging me. How the heck do I do that again? <laughs> there it is. Okay. Whew. That was annoying. All right. So they get they gain religious zealotry and let's think of something else. Uh so we don't really know a ton about the Guado. Here's here's something that we do know about the Guado. Look at these look at these dudes. They're very like tree like. So maybe that guy's not so tree like. That dude's pretty tree-like. So maybe they've got... I don't know why I'm seeing something from Final Fantasy VII Remake. Okay. So maybe... They've got, like, tough skin. Again, they are very much connected to Makalania Woods. So... Let's go with... Pure Bloods having... I don't know why I went to my downloads. So let's go with them having, like, a... Uh, tough skin uh so they gain like a bonus to their you know uh they gain a bonus to their natural ac as long as they aren't wearing uh armor so i actually have here an ability called bark skin eventually I'm going to release this supplement that I have on the second window and everyone's going to look at that and go like, Oh, so that's where he's getting all of these, all of these racial features that he's just copying and pasting in. And suddenly it's all going to make sense. Also, by the way, if you want to check out my supplements, DMs guild, I have one up there called forgotten races. Volume one, get at it. It's pay what you want so you can get it for free. Please don't though. Buy it. Anyways, uh, self plug aside. So that is a pretty, that's a pretty powerful skill, especially for a race that might be more casterly, uh, having when you're not wearing ace, when you're not wearing heavy armor, you get plus one to your AC. That's pretty good. So I'm not going to give them another feature because I think that that is dope AF as the kids would say. So God dang it. I am an idiot. Half blood ability score increase. Woo. This is going a lot faster than I anticipated. I thought we'd be here at about two hours. I'm also talking really quick. So, uh, so half blood, this one's going to get a charisma bonus. Charisma plus one. Man, and I got to go through and I got to edit all this. <sighs> YouTube.com slash C slash Bender Waffles. Okay. Or slash U. It's slash C, I think. I don't know. Just go watch me on YouTube. Anyways. <laughs> so, Half-Bloods. Half-Bloods are much more of a, like... At least, again, I'm thinking in terms of Seymour Guado are much more uh, evil people. Um, he doesn't have the 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 tough skin of his pure blood counter types because that's where he gets sort of his human traits. For those of you who don't know, Seymour Guado, that's what he looks like. That's Seymour Guado. Um, so just looking at this fool. I mean, his stomach hair immediately j jumps out. His regular hair also definitely jumps out. Um, he does have sharp fingertips. So there is an argument that could be made for giving him, although so did the regular uh, um, Guado. 
So let's think here. Now you'll note that when you're when you're home brewing, a lot of it is just sitting there thinking. And maybe, you know, looking up other things and like, you know, trying to find your inspiration. But let's think about this here for for this guy. Hmm. Maybe giving him a bonus to deception would be good. You know, because he's, you know, he's a pretty shifty dude. And he manages to hide in the Church of Yevon, hide his evilness and hide his unsentness for quite a while. Uh, so let's go. Hmm. I don't want to go to the well of taking stuff from my supplement again, but this works really well for him. So we're going to give this guy this ability called natural subterfuge. You are proficient in your choice of two of the following skills. Acrobatics doesn't really work for Seymour, but could work for a half blood Guado that isn't Seymour. Following skills, acrobatics, deception, stealth, and sleight of hand. So he's like kind of talking his way out. He's like trying to like, he's a bard. He's a college of deception bard. That's basically what the half blood kind of plays towards. You don't normally want to be designing races that only really work with one specific type of character, but Sometimes that can be fun. And with sub races, sub races are a great way of giving your players the ability to more specialize what type of character they're wanting to play. So it's just more options, options on options and options and options. That's why there's so many races out there. You don't want to be playing a at home game unless you're playing a game with all humans because humans are so malleable that they can be any possible uh, type of character. You don't want to be playing an at-home game with like three races. Like you're not going to sit there and be like, Hey, we're playing a Spira based game and we're only allowing the Albed, Ronzo and Guado. You're going to get the three archetypes of Albed, Ronzo and Guado. You're going to get a rogue, a uh, fighter and probably a bard or cleric. That's all you're going to get. So if your races are a little bit more specialized, that's fine. Again, it's, it's what you're making for yourself. Is anyone else having the stream cut out or do I just need to go downstairs and whack my router? I hope you just need to go downstairs and whack your router. Uh, <laughs> anybody else having problems? Anybody? You're fine with me at the moment. Have I been fine with you at the moment the entire time? Good. Because I'm not recording this. I'm relying on Twitch's uh, built-in video requirement. Okay, so natural subterfuge. You are proficient in your choice of two of the following skills. So what else? That's pretty powerful. That's pretty good. Um, so what else about Seymour? More Hypello representation. <laughs> I thought about including the Hypello in this tutorial, but... I figured that, again, I was expecting this to take a lot longer than it's taking. I was expecting to not be on the Guado until like the two hour mark. And I'm at an hour and 16 minutes in this live stream. So an hour and a minute because I had a 15 minutes countdown timer. Uh, so maybe if you are wanting it, I'll do high pillow at the end of the stream. Uh, but so what else about a Guado half blood are we thinking? So let's, let's actually just go to Seymour's page because again, he's our example. Uh, he's a high priest. He's a skilled mage and summoner himself. Uh, so, but he's got tattoos. He's human. Oh, are those supposed to be veins on his stomach? I just thought he had really crazy stomach hair. Uh, he is courteous and affable and popular among Yevonites, hence the charisma bonus. 
Uh, Seymour is nihilistic in his views on life. When confronted, he drops the pretense and reveals his true nature as an arrogant and cruel man. Uh, he does he have feelings for Sumner Yuna, or does he just want to like nail her because of who her dad is? So I think that sentence there is a little, a little incorrect. Uh, or maybe I don't know. I don't know if we could come up with a racial feature that allows him to turn into a giant wall. I want to see more figure just so I can burn it. Um, I hate this guy so much. I hate this guy so much. Pandarium seems to have an idea. He's chat. He's chatting. Oh, Pandarium being the, the, the legend of this, uh, <laughs> give him the, why won't you die? <laughs> Actually give him advantage on death throws. That is busted. But once again, going back to the well of another supplement that I've been working on, I have an ability called Undying. When you're reduced to zero hit points but not killed outright, and the damage is not radiant or from a critical hit, you can drop to one hit points instead. You can't use this feature again until you finish a long rest. That is the most disgusting accurate thing that we could possibly give him because <laughs> this dude you fight him like nine times or some crazy amount i actually think it's only like six five or six i think i need to play through the game a while it's been a year uh for those of you who don't know final fantasy 10 is my favorite final fantasy game officially my favorite for a while there i was waffling back and forth between nine and ten uh but for me it's ten ten all the way it hits me in the feels so so hard okay so waffling i see what you did there uh so yeah i mean that's busted but again maybe in play test we would sort of play with that a little bit uh i've got homework for you whether you're watching this on youtube or watch this on twitch what have you i got homework for you what i want you to do is i want you to go in and I want you to make a race. Extra bonus points if you can make a uh, race for these people. You see them like twice in Final Fantasy X. They are the Pelu, 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 Pelu. However the heck you say that. Yeah, make a race for these people if you want bonus points or just make whatever race you want. Um, and, uh, post it to my discord, you know, get in there, get into the just chatting and post it. I want to see what you guys can make, but, uh, I am planning on doing other tutorials in the future. Uh, the easier place to start within homebrewing dungeons and dragons is backgrounds. And I kind of skipped that to go right to races because to me, races is the exciting bit of homebrewing. Um, but I will go back and I'll, I'll teach you guys how to do, uh, character backgrounds. And maybe if this does well, I'll teach subclasses, archetypes, whatever the hell they're called. And, uh, maybe eventually someday full on classes, um, full on classes is probably the most complicated bit of game design that you can do in regards to dungeons and dragons. So I'm not going to do that anytime soon, but maybe I will in the future. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, click that subscribe button. If you're watching this on Twitch, there's a follow button. I'm looking at you people in chat. Uh, there's a follow button down there. There's a subscribe button. Go down there. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you, else you want to see in the future. I have a discord link for that is in the description. If you're on YouTube, I will have more stuff for you in the future. So thanks for coming. Thanks for watching and have a good one. Yeah.